On January 30, 2020, the Director General of the World Health Organization declared the novel coronavirus outbreak a public health emergency of international concern. By mid-March 11, COVID-19 virus was officially a pandemic affecting 114 countries in three months. Since the arrival of the virus, nonprofit organizations and religious communities have worked tirelessly to provide assistance to the most vulnerable. Hearing the call to act immediately, the Henry Luce Foundation Theology Program invited the Borderlands Institute at Bright Divinity School to apply for a grant to bring immediate critical aid, such as food, shelter, transportation, and many more important needs to vulnerable immigrant communities. Upon receiving the COVID-19 emergency grant, Bright moved quickly and urgently to put together a program to dispense the funds. It is important to keep in mind that many members of these immigrant communities provide essential needs, such as harvesting the U.S. food supply, processing the meat in packing facilities, and engage in various service industries, such as the care for children, the elderly and the sick, while others work in housekeeping and landscaping. These individuals are at greater risk of being infected with the COVID-19 virus and thus losing their jobs and in many cases being detained or deported out of the country while possibly carrying the virus. In the midst of COVID-19, immigrant communities, particularly along the southern U.S. and Mexico border, are in urgent need of financial assistance for food, housing, and help to pay the household bills. The COVID-19 emergency grant was used to financially assist established nonprofit humanitarian organizations and religious communities that are involved in sheltering and providing health care, as well as nourishment and other basic and critical pastoral needs. The grant funds also made available the opportunity to document the historical impact the pandemic had on these vulnerable communities and add their voices to the national and global narrative in these unprecedented days. Their voices, their experience have been documented through an oral history project that we are calling Testimonios. These testimonials project hope and not only calls attention to the effects of COVID-19 on the vulnerable on the South border, but also asks to break down barriers between communities. Abarra Frontiers. Abarra Frontiers has been able to provide resources for migrants and asylum seekers in the Ciudad Juarez area. Here are a few photos of a sewing workshop where they have launched a micro enterprise for migrant women to earn income during the pandemic. Navarra Frontiers has also been able to deliver food to migrants living in shelters and migrants not housed in shelters due to shelter overflow. They have been able to also set and infrastructure and help with a clinic for migrants that is staffed by migrant workers, doctors, and nurses. Mi nombre es Emma Chávez y quiero agradecer a Familias Unidas del Chamizal por las despensas que nos ha entregado en esta etapa tan difícil de pandemia donde muchos en el barrio pues no solo han perdido han perdido los trabajos, la salud, sino que también muchos han perdido la vida. Uh, los talleres de Familias Unidas nos han dado mucho apoyo en esta época de aislamiento porque recibimos y damos consejos entre todos para poder enfrentar esta difícil situación. Gracias. Kino Border Initiative. 
Rosario is from Guerrero, Mexico, a young mother of one and a half year old daughter. Rosario comes regularly to the comedor. She says that it is a relief to know that there's somewhere where she can get some necessities. Jocelyn, originally from Petén, Guatemala, arrived to Nogales with her mother at the end of August. They discovered Kino after having been in Nogales for three days. She expresses gratitude and relief to have found a place like Kino where she can come for food, milk, diapers, and other items. Emily is from Mixco, Guatemala. Emily says thank you so much to the people on the other side who think of people like us. May God bless them. People helping people in the border zone. The generous support provided by the Bright Divinity School Henry Luce Foundation went directly to finance the quick construction of a bathroom facility at our humanitarian aid center in the heart of a rural community of Arivaca, Arizona. Prior to this support, we were under-equipped to provide proper sanitation for our community members and undocumented migrants in distress in the contents of the COVID-19 pandemic. People helping people in the border zone sends their heartfelt gratitude for the generosity and solidarity during this time. The following testimonial is one of many refugees who have benefited from the grant at Southwest Good Samaritan Ministries. This next testimonial is of an Honduran's mother, who we will call Luz, and her two children of ages 8 and 12. Luz and her children describe the violence and persecution they suffered in Honduras. Her decision to travel to the U.S. was a life or death situation. This family's journey started by leaving their country by walking. And they often travel by getting rides from people along the way in the highway. After three months, they arrived in Mexico. From there, they traveled to the U.S.-Mexican border and they appealed for American asylum. The U.S. Customs granted the family American asylum and the family was able to obtain the last requirement of credible fear, which grants them the protection of the country they are fleeing. And it also grants them the opportunity to be sponsored by a family. However, without their own family in the U.S., it was a miracle that a family from Honduras who they knew was able to sponsor them in New Orleans, Louisiana. Here, we see Luz and her children ready to board a bus as they prepare to travel to a new safe and peaceful place. The grant's purpose was to aid our virtual dispatch services and purchase a tablet and laptop for the center. This aid promoted telecommunication network access, group cohesion, and communication regarding jobs and other community resources. The grant also provided opportunities to create a solidarity fund for members impacted by COVID-19 to have access to mental health services. Hi, uh, my name is Jesus Lucero. I use they them pronouns. I am the worker dispatcher for the worker center. Yes. Hello, my name is Nora Reyes. I am an intern at the Southside Worker Center. I'm a student at the um, ASU School of Social Work graduate program. And my pronouns are she, her, and hers. Me llamo Antonio Jornalero, de, de este el grupo de trabajadores de la iglesia. ¿Cuál fue la ayuda que recibió de la beca Pray? Recibí un, el de un teléfono inteligente de, para, de, con el que podemos hacer video, video el Zoom, las llamadas, uh -huh. para las juntas. ¿En qué forma le ha ayudado tener un teléfono inteligente? Pues hemos tenido, podemos, hemos tenido más comunicación con mi familia, con mis familias, con, pues, y pues aquí en el trabajo, aquí las juntas ahora en el, en, el, en el grupo de la iglesia. Y pues 
es una ayuda muy, muy, muy buena que, que nos dieron, para, bueno, a los que nos tocó, bendito Dios, porque tenemos el privilegio de, de, de estar comunicándonos con la familia, de saber cómo están, de, de conseguir, poder conseguir trabajo. Y ahorita con esta crisis que tenemos ahorita, pues hay veces que, hay días que trabajamos hasta dos, tres veces a la semana, hay veces que trabajamos, si Dios bendice, nos bendice una semana completa y un mes, un mes no, pero pues ahí vamos saliendo, gracias a Dios, pero pero gracias con el torta con el teléfono que nos, 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 nos dieron, que Dios los bendiga hoy, mañana y siempre por esta bendición que nos dieron y gracias. Um, the first question we have for you, John Paul, is what was the form of aid you received? Uh, I received a, a SIM card, SIM card for uh, with uh, six months, uh, free internet. Uh, I've benefited a lot because you know it was really difficult for me to to, to pay for the services and uh, since then you know it, it helps me because I don't work uh, I don't have anything to eat so it was really difficult and uh, it has really helped me and I think it's going to help me a lot all through this one. Thank you. And what is the greatest benefit that you have noticed in all members having access to a smartphone? Uh, communication is, is, is easier. Heart for Kids ministers across the five county Rio Grande Valley along the U.S.-Mexican border at the southern tip of Texas. It particularly serves the Valley Colonias, which are impoverished unincorporated villages that are home to immigrant families. Jorge Zapata, the minister's founder, said, we knew at the beginning of the pandemic that the Rio Grande families would be most affected because of their social economic status. Heart for Kids partners with local food banks and other providers and government agencies to secure the distribution of food and basic necessities for colonial residents. The number of families needing assistance escalated as the pandemic set in, and families who had never visited a food pantry found themselves seeking help. Heart for Kids was able to provide 1,500 pieces of baby clothing, 5,000 diapers, and 40,000 pounds of food. And it also rented a refrigerated truck that delivered 25,000 gallons of milk in three weeks. Siguiendo los pasos de Jesús.
The Bright Loose COVID-19 relief grant provided emergency support to asylum seekers in the Houston area. These families served were part of the Asylum Seeker Case Management Program implemented by Interfaith Ministries for Greater Houston and funded by Church World Services. 18 of the most vulnerable families enrolled in the Interfaith Ministry Asylum Seeker Case Management Program received direct financial assistance through the Bright COVID-19 Relief Grant. The families who were directly impacted by COVID-19 received assistance for rent and utility expenses, food assistance in the form of Walmart gift cards, aid with children's school fees, and transportation assistance in the form of Metro bus passes. These 18 households consisted of a total of 60 individuals. Eight of the 18 households served by this grant were families with no vehicles who are completely dependent on public transportation. 31 school-aged children were included among the 18 households served by the Bright Loose COVID-19 relief grant. Some school districts surrounding the Houston area are charging $25 deposit fee per each student in the household for Chromebook laptops to access virtual learning during COVID-19. Families with school-aged children receive extra financial assistance to help with such fees and to aid the students in better accessing virtual learning. The families who were served by the Bright Loose COVID-19 Relief Grant represented Honduras, El Salvador, Venezuela, Colombia, and India. They are all individuals seeking asylum in the United States and living in the Houston area. Thank you for hearing these stories on the borderlines. These testimonials were made possible with the support of the Henry Luz Foundation Theology Program and by Bright Divinity. Bright Divinity School would like to thank the organizations who share the voices of the vulnerable with us. Thank you.